Hey I'm Max and welcome to my RPG game devlog. In this video I will be making mobs spawn on the map, adding some dialogues to the quest system, creating a shadow world, a new dimension that overlaps the normal one that you can switch to and back using a magical stone, and also a few more things. First I started working on the spawn zone for the mobs. It was actually pretty easy, all I had to do was make a box and then select a random point in that box spawn the mob in and then teleport it to the ground by using a ray cast. Just like that I had some deer spawning on my map but they weren't moving yet. I simply had to add some navigation data so the mobs could know where they can run to. Next I made it so random mobs spawn from a list. In this forest I decided to spawn deers, foxes and stags. Then I had to add the save system so the game doesn't start from zero every time. I added a save for the player's position, HP, resources, and equipped items. The rest, like the inventory items, will be done later. Next, I started working on the dialogue UI. I went with a very simplistic look of just a box with some text inside, and I made a little swipe up and down animation for when you open it and close it. I made the dialogue box pop up when interacting with an NPC. And obviously the NPC says what he has to say depending on which quest you're on. Then I added a minimap to the screen to help the player locate nearby things. However, since my map isn't final yet, I didn't bother with precision so it's a bit off right now but the final version will be more accurate. Since I've started saving and loading the player's position, I have had a bug where sometimes when launching the game, I fall through the map. That is because the map takes a bit of time to load, so by the time it's loaded, the player is falling under it. My first idea to fix this was to freeze a player on spawn, and then move the player up in case the player fell under the map for whatever reason, until the map is detected under. And well that did work, but it looked and felt terrible. I thought since the player shouldn't fall under the map too often, they shouldn't see this too often, so it was okay, but I did end up making it better later. Then I added a lake and apparently the player is Jesus because he can walk on water. So I made the player go through the water and now I was faced with a very big problem. And that is what do I do with the deep water? Do I add swimming? I don't really want to add swimming because it would just be more animations and work and it wouldn't add anything new to the game because the combat system and everything else would just be the same in the water. So I had to either find some ideas to make swimming useful or simply find a way to avoid swimming. I decided to take the easy solution and avoid it. Now I had to choose between preventing the player from going deep or simply not making it deep anywhere. Invisible walls in open world games feel terrible so I decided to make the water not too deep so you can go everywhere but it never goes above your head. I still need to add a camera effect when the camera is underwater because right now when you're underwater it's like you have no water anywhere so it looks very weird but even like this, it looks decent. Finally, I was ready to start attacking a big part of the project, which is the second dimension. Thankfully, Unreal Engine 5 has a new feature called Data Layers. That allows you to load and unload layers that contain a list of actors, such as the map or trees or animals. By putting all of my normal world stuff in a layer and all of my shadow world stuff in another layer and switching their state in blueprint, I was able to make things appear and disappear by pressing a key. I also created a second landscape and put it in the other layer so only one of them is loaded at a time. I added some new textures for it and built a rocky and scary map. I then had to make sure all the mobs were deleted when changing worlds so you won't end up with things like foxes in the shadow world or demons in the normal world. And voila, switching world works great. However, now the big problem is that when I switch world I often fall under the map. And that's because when you switch from one world to another, the two worlds may not have the same elevation at that position. So I made it so when you load the world, it checks down and then up to find the ground and then teleports you to it. This way you never fall under the map. Then I made some special creatures like zombies spawn in the shadow world to make it more dangerous. 
Also, switching world by pressing a key was weird, so I made some magic rocks that you can interact with to switch world. I also added some dark fog to the shadow world to make it scarier. Now that all the features are ready, I decided to make a tutorial quest. You start off by going to see the first NPC, he tells you to equip the armor on the ground and go on two stags. You do that, go back to him and he tells you that he saw a mysterious light near the mountains and asks you to go look. You have a marker on your screen showing you where to go. You go there and the magic rock is here, you interact with it and it makes you switch to the other world. Then you can switch back and go back to the NPC. That's all I've done for now, but in the next videos I'll be adding a lot more content since all the major functionalities are ready, that's all I have to do now. I might need to take a bit of time to write down the story and sketch the map to make sure I don't have to restart too many things. Thanks for watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to see the next ones. I'd say this game is about halfway done and so far it's nothing insane but it's pretty good and I'm really proud of it. Hopefully some people watching these videos will stick to the end and play it.